Someone wrote it and said, you talk about how not to fall in love, but how do you extricate yourself when you realize you're not with your species? A really bad fit. But those cocaine and dick addiction chemicals are still happily trophying through your system. Mm. This is Reed from ReadAboutSex.com. Kathy Bartuli from IntimacyDojo.com. It's a great question. Woo! You know you have a drug problem, but mm. you can't seem to quit it. Well, yeah. it is very addictive. I mean, it's, it's a, a lovely feeling when you find somebody that you're connected with, you've broken through the social fears, and you're like, there... And then you're like, oh, bad fit, but oh, I want that high yeah. feeling, that dopamine hit. Well, and then there's also things can be further complex for a lot of people. We don't know with this situation, but maybe you've already moved in. Mm-hmm. You, I mean, I've lived in New York City for 20 years, so it's like you know, people fall in love and move in immediately just to save, yeah. cut down their living expenses because the city is so expensive. So like there, there could be financial situations or kids involved. I've had um, some amazing friends of mine, single moms mm-hmm. and single dads, who didn't want to break up because the relationship their child was having with the other adult was what the kid needed, right? So I'm just saying, like, we this was a things are often sometimes way more complex than just the chemical high, yes. and we want to be, take that into account um, because sometimes my advice, I won't speak for yours, is very oversimplified um, but we do need to acknowledge and try to be as kind and compassionate as we can for how the chemistry can also be happening while a system is a situation is complex that being said my biggest piece for the healthiness of a relationship even when you're stoned is can you talk about this um, do you have you exercised your muscles in that relationship to be able to talk about what you are afraid to talk about? And can you have those conversations in a pretty, you know, um, emotionally high IQ, treat people kindly, even when you're having the feels? If you can have a, those kinds of conversations and, and navigate them, that's the most important thing. Because eventually the high will wear off, and you'll at least both be able to have a conversation sober about the bad fit and then what to do next. And I'm curious too, when you say it's a really bad fit, are you looking at it as a, a, what's your concept of what the relationship looks like? Because they may be a wonderful fit for friends with benefits, or like it might, if you can redefine what you're looking for, you might actually be able to keep the oxytocin high and the, the good mm-hmm. and the good parts of the fit and let go of some of the expectations of the things that don't fit. Um, if you decide that this is just somebody who you should not have in your life, cutting it off and not re-experiencing that high with them is really important, as well as trying to get some dopamine, some chemicals to your system in other ways, whether you go for massages, invite friends to drag you out of the house to have good times, mm-hmm. But that will help offset a little bit of the, you know, the chemical response is very yeah. strong. Um, so re-experiencing it with them just increases the bonding. Mm-hmm. Um, whereas finding that, reminding your body you can get some of that oxytocin from other ways um, can really help alleviate. It doesn't make it go away, unfortunately, but it can help alleviate some of the withdrawal. Yeah, a, tra- a transition or a breakup is still going to impact you. Um, and biggest thing is to just understand that a lot of people rather than handle the the hangover you know have a rebound relationship yeah so be mindful that get your your monkey needs and your serotonin and dopamine fixes from your friends and from social activity you know start a new hobby that is a social hobby you know probably not computer coding but like dance partner dance or something like that um and hang out with your friends and, and, and that will ease uh, often the, the feels and the withdrawals and, and beef up on your grieving protocols. Like how can you grieve and do better self-care for yourself? Because my parents didn't teach me how to grieve and American culture certainly is horrible at it. Um, so beefing up on those things. Uh, and is it Brene Brown that has a yeah, good book on grieving? Yeah, so you know, Maybe distract yourself by reading and learning uh, and beef up on those, um, the information and the tools that will help you get through things. 
That's just useful for life. And you recommend in your any bad relationship program not seeing that person for three, you make an agreement we're not going to see each other for three to six months. Yeah, and I'll tell you right now, it's uh, three to six months. I really tell people at least a year. Don't see each other for a year. Um, that is the best advice I can give you. Which is harder if you're in the same social community. And most people can't agree to a year, so I t- so tell you three to six months, but I'm telling you it's a year. Just trust me. And under no circumstances, if you're supposed to be breaking up, try to have sex with that person. It, <laughs> Every time like, I think everybody's like, done I'm that. I'm trying. I'm trying to quit this drug. I'm just gonna have a little. <laughs> no, don't do that. Don't do that. Um, cold turkey is often the hardest. Uh, Short term. And, and is the easiest. Life. Yeah, it's like don't go back to the dentist four times and have them pull your wisdom teeth out a half each way. Pull the whole thing. Usually, if it is truly you are destined to not be live-in lovers and life partners, but fuck buddies forever, you can transition that, but that's a little bit trickier, but it can be done, um, and in which case probably just email me for advice and maybe a coaching session or something, because that's a little bit more than we can talk about in YouTube. Yeah. Um, and one thing I really want to encourage you, I love that you're, you have the consciousness that it's a bad fit now. A lot of people are lost to the chemicals and they don't notice those things. Sadly, a lot of people wait until there's enough bad blood and, and resentments between the two of them to push them apart, which mm-hmm. just, I mean, that's a big waste of time and energy for both people. Yep. And you're not interacting with other people during that time. So if it's not a good fit, it's better to pull the band-aid out. Yeah. You don't have to have a crash and burn to walk away from something with some sort of respect. You can do it earlier and consciously. It's still going to suck sometimes, but, you know, I think that's being grown up. Comments. Do yeah. some comments. Did we answer all your questions? Did this help? Hit subscribe. Share this video with a friend. If you share it with the person that you're trying to break up with, that might be a little weird. Thanks for tuning in, Sex Geek. If you would like to continue with the brain sex, do me a favor and click subscribe right here. If you'd like to watch me on social media, that's where you're going to go. Next video, maybe? And if you really would like your own Sex Geek t-shirt, please click right here, right now. Boop. No, no, really, like...